A quick shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Today I'm going to revamp my Mitosaur station. It badly needs organizing, but also as my workshop is really quite narrow, I'm going to reduce the depth of it to give me a bit more room. At the moment, I barely have enough room either side of my table saw to use my mitre saw and my drill press. These plastic boxes were only ever supposed to be temporary, but they've actually been there for about 10 years. I'm going to put drawers all the way across and get things properly organized. These four drawers that hold my screws and hardware, they're fine, so I'll keep those and I'll make some more to go underneath for the rest of my fittings. The first thing I need to do is get everything out there and then I can get started. It really is in a shocking state, but that's what happens when you go two or three years going straight from one project and straight on to the next. The top gets cluttered because there are too many things living on there that don't have a home. That should change though, now that I'm gonna have more drawers. Even though my new saw is much bigger than the old one, there's a lot less room taken up at the back of the fence, which is the reason why I can reduce the depth of the workbench. On the old saw, from the back wall to the front of the fence takes up 65 centimeters. And on the new saw, that distance is 34 centimeters, so I can reduce the workbench by the difference between the two. And to show you the reason why my new Bosch saw doesn't take so much room, I've lined the fences up with the two saws. And the reason is, is the old saw uses these slides. And even with the blade fully forward, the back of the saw hangs over the end of the table. And that's even without extending the slides. And with the Bosch saw, it's level with the back of the bench. And that's because it uses the glide system and it doesn't have those big slides on the back. I'm sure most of you have seen the glide system before. I reckon it's pretty awesome and it's allowing me to free up a full foot or 30 centimeters of my workshop. Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. I'll fix that bit of trim up later on. I just pushed the mite saw over off camera and that's because I didn't leave enough room to fully adjust the mite saw over to the left and now that leaves a little bit of clearance. Here's the old fence, it worked well enough but the track on the top wasn't the best, it did get a bit of dust in there now and again so to improve it I'm going to reuse it but I'm going to light down flat. First thing I'll do though is reduce the width and trim it down. I couldn't get a right to left tape locally, but that's okay, because here down under, we're pretty good at reading upside down.
I'll probably make a better stop with the flip up top, but for now, I just want to get this one accurate and after doing the test, that one is spot on. Now I'm making a simple bed for the right hand side of the saw. It needed a shim under one end and a strip of sandpaper was the perfect thickness. I did put some back pieces in later on to strengthen it up and also I think I might make some small drawers to fit in there. The dust collection for the mite saw used to come from here and it went diagonally over to this corner and back down but then I had these lights fitted that threw a shadow down onto my work which was no good for filming and I've never got around to fixing it up but what I need to do is put it along that wall back underneath the top of that door and then back down the corner there which is where it used to come down and then it went along and under the back of the bench and up underneath the saw and it worked very very well. Now that I've pushed the mud saw back, there isn't enough room there to put a 100mm pipe, but I am going to make a channel that fits down there and then somehow fit that on afterwards. Now I'll start making a dust hood. I've picked out a pretty twisted and warped piece of plywood. I've had it a while, it needs using, so hopefully I can wrestle it into shape. I'm making a couple of dados on each side piece by making a series of cuts on the table saw. There was a bit of cleanup to do with the chisel because the plywood had been so warped, but it didn't take too long.
There was a big bow in the bottom shelf, so I added a support underneath and a divider inside the cupboard to try and straighten it out. I had to take a notch out though for the handle. I'm going to trim the plywood edges and to make the trim I'm using this camphor laurel that I milled myself a few years ago. I'm also going to trim the lower existing cabinet so I'll make enough trim for that too. I reckon whatever mitre saw you have, the dust collection is going to be a challenge. It really isn't a good tool for efficiently dealing with that, but you have to try it, else it just gets everywhere. What I found out when making the original hood for my last saw is running the dust collector on its own works okay and running a vac on its own works okay, but if you run both together then things improve. And with the vac I've got that set up so it starts when you start the saw, so the only thing you need to turn on is the dust collector. If you cut small trim or nothing too big then this setup catches just about everything but if you cut wider pieces away from the fence then some of the dust hits the fence and bounces back and whatever dust collection you have isn't going to be able to deal with that. But saying that, having dust collection with a hood it will catch all that fine dust in the air and pull that in and that's the stuff that's dangerous for you anyway. I like having a scrap bin next to the saw so I'm going to reuse my old one but it does need trimming down to fit on top of the reduced bench top. And now I'll make a couple of doors for that top cupboard, they're just pieces of plywood and they're from that same twisted piece of construction ply that I used before. Now I'll start trimming the main cabinets, it's looking a bit tired so it will dress it up but also the shelves and the side of the cabinets are offset and I need them to be flush so I can use the trim to do that. Now I'll start making the drawers and first I'll go through and cut all the pieces I need from 12mm plywood. After ripping all the different strips on the table saw into the different widths I need, I then cut each piece to length on the mitre saw and the cuts off the new mitre saw are super clean and accurate and I'm very very impressed. After cutting the draw bottoms again with 12mm plywood I'll start assembling them. I'm not doing anything fancy here just gluing nails, they'll be quick to put together and they'll be plenty strong enough for what I need.
I've put a couple of screws in the slides now and then after adjusting them I add a third one later. I cut the drawer fronts off camera and now I need to go through and fit each one individually as the cabinets are all different shapes. I first attach them with a pin nailer and as this is only a workshop and you can hardly see them, they don't even need filling. After they're fixed in place with the pin nailer, I screw them securely from the back. I went through each drawer and adjusted the slides and I also used the odd shim behind a couple of the drawer fronts to line them up. After sanding the faces, I gave them a couple of coats of water-based varnish just to give them a bit of protection. Next, I started making the handles and for those, I used some rosewood. The main section of drawers and the hood are finished. I've already cut the pieces to make the rest of the drawers to fill the station out. On the right, underneath the saw, I'm adding vertical storage. I understand the slides aren't meant to be used on the top and bottom of the drawer, but I reckon they'll be fine. I put one or two things in the drawers to try them out. I stapled the cord across to stop them from falling out, and I added a couple of shelves as well. I'll add more shelves as I need them and as I fill them up, but I'll do that later on. I also made those two drawers for underneath the bed and they're pretty handy for everyday knickknacks like pencils and tape measures and that sort of thing. I'll just take a moment to thank today's sponsor which is Squarespace. Squarespace is a powerful online platform from which to build your website straight from your browser. It's perfect for any sort of artist, maker or craftsman to share their creativity. I've just relaunched my website using Squarespace and what I really like is there's nothing to install, patch or update. All that's taken care of. If you do run into any issues though, then they do have 24 seven customer support. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the code PASTMAKES to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. And thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring the video. All I need to do now is fill those drawers and get organized. It's a massive improvement. It's going to make my life a lot easier. And I absolutely love that new saw. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.